Why do you think people need guru figures? Why do they turn to all these guru figures? Uh, I have very often said this and I want to repeat that again. And uh, uh, in the oriental countries, that's the culture in which uh, we were brought up. And there were no escapes for us in those days. See, religion was the only escape for people. But uh, in the West, why they are falling for all these gurus that come is that then once you have everything that you can reasonably ask for, this basic question springs up, pops up in us, and we ask ourselves and others, is that all? And we are not ready to accept that's all, you see. We have been brainwashed to believe that we are all materialistic in our thinking, in our BIF life. And they have unfortunately superimposed on that what is called the spiritual life. And we have all been persuaded for generations to follow or pursue the spiritual life. Unfortunately, the value system we have in this world is modeled after the spiritual teachers and their modes of life. And that placed before us the model of a perfect being. Whereas nature is creating perfect species. And perfect species are quite different from perfect beings. That is why there is this suffering, there is this misery. And we accept once that that is the model for us, the way we are living, the way we are feeling, the way we are thinking just doesn't fit into us. And that turned us all into neurotic individuals. Well, well not all of us, I suppose, but uh, still, certainly, there, there is that element perhaps in any seeker. Yeah, but uh, that applies to every mode of thinking, not necessarily uh, the religious thinking of mine. I maintain that all uh, thinking Things are born out of the same is the thinking of man. You may not agree and your listeners probably will reject that when I say, and I say with great emphasis, that thought uh, in its very birth, in its content, in its expression, in its action is fascist. Maybe quite different from the political uh, ideology called fascism but it wants to control everything. One basic demand of us all is that we believe and also there is a need to believe in things and that is exploited by not only the, the spiritual teachers, past, present, and probably the teachers said to be born will force us to believe in something what they are saying and the political ideologies are exactly the same. All the political ideologies, nothing but the warty outgrowth of religion. But you yourself have had some kind of enlightenment experience, haven't you? I think it was in 1967 in Switzerland. What, what do you mean by the word enlightenment? What, did, what were you freed from? Yeah, I, I am freed from the demand to be enlightened. Naturally, uh, because I was born in uh, a religious atmosphere, superimposed on that, the theosophical atmosphere, I was surrounded by the, the holy men all through my life, you see, especially in the formative years. And I found, rather I was intrigued when I discovered that there was a dichotomy in their lives. What they preached was one thing, and the teachings uh, and their preachings didn't produce the results. Huh? They blamed the followers, saying that the teaching is all right, the teachers are all right, something wrong with you. So I said to myself, nothing can be wrong here. Something is wrong with the teaching of these people. If the teaching doesn't uh, produce the results, something wrong with the teacher as well. So then the sentimentality comes into the picture and we cannot so easily brush aside the teachers. 
and the teachers that were around me were the imitants of the great teachers that mankind is supposed to have produced. And this was really my problem. You see, I did not call them hypocrites, I did not call them uh, this, that or the other. But uh, why am I interested in enlightenment? Because I was brought up in that atmosphere, the be-all and end-all of our existence was to attain enlightenment. And then when once the whole the traditional background went out of my system, I switched over to psychology, to science, to modern uh, contribution of the thinkers of our today. And I didn't discover anything uh, original there. So I go to the extent of saying that there is nothing original in anybody. I can say that the, the thoughts I think are not my own, the feelings I feel are not my own, and the experiences I experience are not my own, because all my experiences are born out of uh, the thinking process. So there is nothing original. I have a friend who is one of the top film directors, and he's also the biographer of my book. And I tell him always, don't quote the source, you're always original. And uh, I discovered in my own way, and I still maintain, that this uh, human body is nothing but an extraordinary computer with tremendous innate, inborn intelligence, unparalleled. And the intellect which we have acquired through repetitive process, through study, through this, that and the others, is no match to that. I am not here to give a talk, but uh, let me say what I want to say. And so I, uh, somehow, it hit me one day, like a lightning or an earthquake, that there is no such thing as enlightenment at all. And uh, why the hell have I been pursuing this, wanting this? And. Uh, Everything that is there in the book I have, through the help of my own thought, experienced myself. Anything that is there you can experience. Is there anything that I can experience I do not know? So it occurred to me, and still I maintain, that what you do not know, you cannot experience. What we know is always a second-hand, third-hand knowledge that is passed on to us from generation to generation. And then that switched on to me and put me in a situation where I wanted to want something which nobody else wanted. Everything I wanted, you see, was what they wanted me to want. Is there anything that I want other than what they wanted me to want? Then I found that there was nothing that I wanted to want other than that, other than what they wanted me to want. But it never occurred to me that, that that is also a want, to want something that others wanted me to want, and not to want what they uh, wanted me to want. And so it hit me so hard, like an earthquake or a, a lightning, and finished the whole thing, and what happened? Has anything happened? I don't even know. So, I am certain that there is no such thing as enlightenment at all. And this certainty that dawned on me as a result of flushing out of everything that everybody said and experienced before you, left me with the extraordinary way this body is functioning. So, uh, the people always ask me the question, are you enlightened or not? To me, there is no such thing as enlightenment at all. Anybody who claims that he is an enlightened man, and sets up a holy business, it is his affair, and it is the tragedy of those who follow such people. And at the same time, I am not interested in condemning those people uh, who have set up holy business to enter enlighten other people. It is not my business, you see. They have to find out for themselves and by themselves 
that they are all taking them for a ride. Just the way I found myself that I was misled, misguided, and ended up a misspent man. So it's not my interest to free them. I'm not a missionary in that sense. To free them and, and free uh, them from their teachers, you see. There is a demand, obviously they are uh, supplying the demand. So oh, we, are, we are ready yeah. for the shoddy piece of goods, you know. I'm not sure with your message whether you will... I'm, I know that nobody will accept ever get a pink Rolls Royce. I, uh, I, I, I don't know, try and uh, buy one Rolls Royce car. Huh? It's not a joke, you <laughs> see. A 96 Rolls Royce cars or 360 Rolls Royce cars is a joke. You know, those people who give, denying themselves the basic things, put them there. And uh, it's an easy way of living, you see, for them. They try and uh, function in this world. Many of those people, uh, I call them uh, Krishnamurti's widows, or Rajanish widows, and divorces are the teachers that we are uh, having in our midst. And sometimes I use a very crude expression, tarts and harlots who go to every guru. That's the kind of people that come to see me. And so I decided, you see, to go public, if I may use that word, one day, and try to uh, use this media to communicate uh, whatever I want to, to put across to those people who are not actually uh, caught up in this kind of a thing. But everybody is caught up in something or the other. You see, whether it is a political ideology, or uh, religious ideology, or, or uh, name it, you see. So, as I said at the very beginning, we have to believe, and we need to believe. We also need to understand, don't we? I mean, that, that is a basic human desire, to understand the world. Do you feel that your message is helping people to understand, or is it just lulling them in some no, way? No, no, no. You see, this was my question, and the demand to understand myself and the world around me. When once the demand to bring about a change in you isn't there, the demand to change the world also is not there. And what is the instrument that I am using to understand myself and to understand the world around me? So I never questioned. You see, when this thing dawned on me, what people call enlightenment or transformation or any word, it really doesn't matter, dawned on me, I said to myself, this is not the instrument that will help me to understand or that can help me to understand another, anything else in this world, me or the world around, and there is no other instrument. So... This is a dark the, message. No, it is not a dark message. When, it, uh, when you face the reality of the situation that this instrument is not the instrument at all and there is no other instrument, there is nothing to understand. You see, but I never said to myself, there is nothing to understand. This finished the whole thing. And I did not uh, get up on a platform and uh, come ye people and listen to me. I have found something. I have understood something. I am a teacher, you see, combining all the other teachers that existed before me. Finished. That was the end of it, you see. So, when people come to see me, I just point out, look here, you see, I, I can uh, uh, discuss any subject from disease to divinity, and I have opinions on uh, everything in this world. I'm but sure. at the same time, I know that my opinions are no more valid than the opinions of, you see, the fellow who is uh, sweeping the, uh, the floor there or collecting the garbage. You see, we think that, you see, uh, a religious man or an enlightened man's uh, opinions are very uh, important and that will help us to understand something. But as far as I'm concerned, my opinions are no more important than the opinions of anybody in this world. Well, you, G. Krishnamurti, you don't believe in originality, but it's still quite an original position for a guru. Thank you very much for talking with me this evening.